C-sharp events and delegates are great for decoupling your code, and decoupling is important, otherwise it's spaghetti. Ideally, your code should be isolated and miserable like myself. Now, there's already plenty of videos on the what's and why's. I recommend the two-part series by the guy with the sexy British voice. I'm just here to share how I like to set mine up. So, quick backstory. I've been using events for a while now, and I've had people before ask, why don't I implement generics into my solution? And the answer was basically, I would love to, but I have no idea what I'm doing. And just recently, I was just thinking about it and suddenly it hit me. I had like this 500 IQ moment. I felt like I was levitating and a third eye was opening in the middle of my forehead and in a flow state I just flawlessly typed out the solution, implemented the generics in a minute. Now those feelings may have had to do with the substances I was on but I am more convinced it was from figuring out generic. And I'm here to share that solution with you and it's clean and abstract. You'll create a new event and just one line of code. You could pass in as many parameters as you like of any kind. Let's say we have a sound manager class. It just needs to play an attack sound when the player attacks. So we're simply gonna fire an event from the player attack class, sending out a message you attack, and the sound manager class will just respond to it by playing the sound. Create two classes named generic event and events library. In the generic event class, implement a generic signature like this, using T as the standard naming convention. Create an event with the event handler delegate of a generic type called on event called. Create a method called call event that takes in a generic parameter. It fires the event if it isn't null. Open the events library class. This is where we give birth to new events. Let's make one for when the player attacks. Create and instantiate a static read-only generic event of type event args called player attacked. That's it. Now we just need to fire and listen for this event. I'm going to open up my player attack class and in the attack method invoke this event like so. I'm not passing in any information right now so I just send empty event args. Now in my sound manager class let's subscribe to this event. Create a method called play attack sound with parameters that match the event. In this case that is an object and event args. Subscribe to the method in on enable like this and make sure to unsubscribe from it in on disable like this. It's as simple as that. Now we would just run the logic to play the actual sound in the method here. And we would also listen for this event on a class that's handling the animations. It would listen for the attack event and play an attack animation. So that's great, but what if we need to pass in information through these events? Even here, for example, depending what sound I want to play, I need to know if that hit actually landed on an enemy or missed. So let's do that now. Create a class called event args library. Make a public read-only struct called attack event args. So as mentioned before, I'm gonna make a bool here called hit and create a constructor to pass in the value for that. So back to the event library class in our player attack event, we want to now pass in this struct instead of the event args. Now back in the player attack class, instead of passing an event args, we'll pass in a new instance of the player attack event args struct, uh, as well as a value for the bool, depending on if the hit landed. Now finally, in our sound manager class, again, update the event args to our new uh, struct custom event args there and we can access its parameters uh, right through there. 